Students stage walkouts across the country and throughout our region. They want stricter gun laws. They also want the adults in Washington to step up and do something. We're going to speak with a local superintendent who also wants to see something get done on guns. Plus, the Prococo trial is over, but now former Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano is the next official headed to the courtroom. We are on Corruption Watch. And also, we're going to look at why the special election in Pennsylvania yesterday was so special, especially for Democrats hoping to win back the House of Representatives come November. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in tonight for Richard French. Students raising their voices on guns once again today. This, the images from Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. It was one of thousands of schools nationwide that held student walkouts today. On this, the one month anniversary of the massacre there that killed 17 people. The walkouts lasted 17 min minutes in memory of each of the victims in Parkland. A large crowd also converged on the White House today, pushing for stricter gun laws. And dozens of school through, schools throughout our region had walkouts of their own. They read the names of the victims from Parkland, held up their photos, had moments of silence, and just gathered to remember the victims and show their solidarity. These students in Ridgewood, New Jersey, explained why they were participating today. I'm tired of being afraid to go to school, to go to concerts, to enjoy things in life, and to have to be, have those opportunities taken away from you and be afraid to go live your life to the f fullest isn't fair. We are not anti-guns, but we are anti-gun violence, and we are trying to use our voices and everything in our power to make a change. There were also lots of school protests on Long Island today. Here, a couple of students from Southside High School in Rockville Center. It's gotten to a point where every month there's a new school shooting and it's just, it's scary because my sister's college, there was a um, gunman on her campus once and they, he was going straight to her class. It makes me feel good that we could have a voice and stand up for what we believe in. And several hundred students at Croton Harmon High School gathered in front of that school today to protest. They also read the names of each victim who died in the Parkland school shooting. The students here telling us they're looking for results and not just talk. I hope we're able to enact change to make stricter gun laws nationally. Um, hopefully some sort of assault rifle ban. I think we just need better representation for the students in our government. Also in the Hudson Valley, students in White Plains took part in protests today. And just after school let out for the day, I spoke with the superintendent of the White Plains Public School District, Joseph Ricca. Superintendent Ricka, thanks for joining us. Uh, give us, set the scene for how things went in White Plains today. How were the protests from students? Do we know what percentage of students at the high school joined in? That sort of thing. Well, thanks for having me. Um, it's great to be here. And uh, it, was, it was amazing to see. It was amazing to be there and to see it happen. Uh, we're talking about um, a, a high school with over 2,000 students. And I, and I would tell you that probably close to 1,000 children uh, participated wow. in, in today's event. Yeah, and it was organized from beginning to end by the kids. I, I, I want to ask the cynical question first, sure. the, the critical question. Why did the district accommodate the protests today, and is it because you support greater gun safety or gun control? Did, did your own personal views influence your decision when it came to the students? You know, that, that's a great question because I know a lot of the viewers at home are probably thinking about something like that. The answer is 100% no. Uh, the reason why we support our students is because one of the primary functions in a public school is to make sure that our children are ready and prepared to engage in the complexity of society. We talk about in White Plains real life learning, right? That's our motto. Um, what, how much more real life can you get than having a conversation on a complex topic such as this? So no, it has nothing to do with my personal beliefs and has everything to do with our ability to support our kids. And for those who might be wondering if the district by allowing these protests sort of encouraged the students to protest, was that the case or, or were they ju were just encouraging them to sort of use their voice? Well, look, we didn't have to encourage anything. I, you know, I can tell you right from the get-go, um, the students in our high school uh, are very attuned to what's happening nationally. They're very attuned to the, the daily news, right? So as soon as the tragedy unfolded in Parkland and, and movements started popping up and folks started talking about never again, um, we had students in our, in our high school that immediately were, were having conversations about that. So, you know, I think one of the things we think about kids is, like, they're not paying attention. They are. They're paying attention to everything. And this was student-generated? Completely. 
What, what about the students who might have found themselves on the other side of the sure. debate? Were they accommodated for today? Were they allowed to express their their points of view? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So the, the approach was, and, and the, the administration at the at the high school was was great in terms of their communication with the students. The approach was, if you were interested or if you were planning to to conduct some type of event, you would reach out, connect with us, and we'd be able to provide venue and safety and security. Um, so any student had the opportunity to do that. Uh, to to date, or you know, today, we only had that one group that said they wanted to participate in today. But, you know, the school is always open to all opposing views. And uh, as an educator, I'm sure you looked at today as something of a teachable moment. How do you turn this from just a protest or just an expression into a, an actual life lesson, an actual classroom lesson? That's a great question. And, and I'm a history teacher, <laughs> so um, you taught you turn it into a lesson by connecting it to to tomorrow's conversation and the day after that and making sure that students understand that first of all it's okay to have opposing viewpoints no matter what they are and that they should have a safe venue to be able to talk about them and that this is a big issue that that's been around for quite some time and and they have a voice in it what's been the reaction of your students since parkland you know uh, uh, i think like a lot of students and and a lot of all of us uh, the reaction has been that we don't want to see this happening. Our schools should be safe places for our kids. So anytime we see something like this, some tragedy like this take place, um, it shakes us to the core. And, and it really makes us think hard uh, about our schools and, and about what we can do to continue to protect our kids. And so our kids have been really engaged in a conversation about school safety and security. And I want to ask you a couple of specific questions about sure. school safety and, and, and gun policies. And, and I don't want to get you in trouble with your with your uh, Board of Education, <laughs> so uh, feel free to, to dip your toe in as far as you want. But uh, first of all, do you have active shooter drills in your schools, and have you noticed a change in how students respond or engage in them since Parkland? Well, the, the first part, we, we do. We have, we have um, lockdown drills. You know, we don't call the drills active shooter drills, but just like uh, all other public school districts, we have lockdown the drills. The kids must know what it is, though. Um, they do, but you know, a lockdown can be for any, any number of reasons, not just an active shooter, right? It could be a raccoon in the hallway. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have those drills. Uh, since the time that, that Parkland occurred, um, I, I've not seen a change or heard of anyone seeing a change in the way our kids conduct themselves. I'll tell you, during drills, our, our, our children conduct themselves the way that we expect them to, which is take it seriously. Are you aware of any moments or any incidents at the high school, either since Parkland or even before, where there might have been a fear that something was happening? I mean, obviously, no, there hasn't been an incident, but there's right. always, you hear a loud noise or you, uh, who you knows? You know, I think everyone, I think everyone's very sensitive right now. Um, so what we what we have had is we've had probably reports of, of things uh, you know or concerns that, that have come to our attention. Um, you know I can't say that it's it's happened more than it would have happened prior to uh, Parkland, but you know people are people are very they're very much sensitive to the environment right now. Finally, is there armed security on White Plains school campuses and do you want armed teachers on White Plains school campuses? Yeah, so in White Plains we have a, a tremendous relationship with, uh, with the city and, and the Department of Public Safety. Our mayor, um, our commissioner and our chief are outstanding community partners. We have school resource officers which our Board of Education I think was um, brilliant in, in terms of employing and we have them at our high school. We also have security officers um, in our buildings. So we do have armed personnel around and in our buildings. Um, I do not support arming teachers. I think it's, uh, it's an idea that was not well thought out, and I, and I truly hope we never go down that road. Joseph Rick is the superintendent of the White Plains School System. What's the team name for White Plains? We're the Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Thank you very much. For Thank you very much. Today's student protests were just a prelude for the March for Our Lives, which is set for March 24th. That's one week from Saturday. The main protest will be in Washington, D.C. Rich will be there live. Richard French will be live in Washington covering it. And we'll also have events in dozens of other cities, including New York. There will be coverage all day on the 24th on Fios 1 News. Up next, students walk out, but Congress is dragging its feet on gun legislation. What will it take for Washington to act? We're going to look at the politics of the gun debate in light of today's protests next.